epic fantasy drama Outlander recently concluded its fifth season against a backdrop of the many looming threats lurking in untamed 18th century America. I'm Rob LaCouria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I am here with star Sam Hewitt. Sam, there was something new and bold about season five's energy and impact. I felt it was more emotional and ambitious than ever. Do you agree that it was probably the strongest season since season one and season two? Rob, great to see you. And I to totally, totally agree with you. I think it's uh, bold and um, emotional. I think is absolutely right. And I think when we shooting it, I mean, I, I hate to like jinx these things or put, you know, put any pressure on it, but it did feel, it did feel different. I felt, you know, every time we got the scripts through and we were working on them, there were such, there were such big storylines. Uh, so much happens. Um, you know, obviously they've used a lot of um, the storylines from, you know, uh, from the next book as well. But I think that the, the crafting of the storylines were great. And obviously, you know, Jamie's storyline for me was, was a huge one. And, and since probably I would say, yeah, I think season one, obviously for everyone is one of our favorites. Um, for me, I always loved season three as a, a sort of personal journey for, for Jamie, but this one was huge. And uh, yeah, the Murta storyline for me was just so good to get your your teeth into, as they say. And yeah. Um, yeah, what a season, really good. It was really good. I'm actually a season two guy, but that's a whole other interview. We'll do that yeah. another time. Um, good to you know. know. Is it any coincidence that you and Katrina became producers over that over season five? Like, did that help with your ability to help mold the way that the show was going to go? I mean, of course, yes, absolutely. I'm going to take all the credit. Um, <laughs> Just do it. Take no, it. no. I mean, you know, actually, we we didn't get the producer credit until quite late on in the process um, of the scripts being broken down. So, to be honest, we didn't for the early part of the season get as much influence, but definitely, I think towards the end, you know, I mean, I think the writers and and Matt. Um, Matt B. Robertson have always been extremely generous in, in talking and, and um, having a dialogue with us as actors. But I think now being producers, I think, yeah, we definitely have more say. And I think the episode you really feel probably the main influence would be, um, would be the last episode, the finale. Um, yeah. That's where I think myself and Trina uh, were very close with the director and with Tony, obviously, and Matt who, who wrote it. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably where you'd probably feel most of our influence but yeah it was uh, it was really cool to get that producer credit and to to just be involved a bit more and to you know to, to go to production meetings to see all the work that goes on behind the process and also to have a say and um, um, be more in a, a collaborative role I suppose. Yeah I, I mean it was it was nice of the uh, producers and, and the network team to let you and Katrina have that involvement it just shows that they have kind of some confidence in your ability and and you're obviously how critical you both are to the success of the show. Speaking of- Well, I think also, yeah, just just to pick up on there, Robert, it's just like, you know, also, I mean, you know, we've lost, or I wouldn't say lost, you know, a lot of the creative side of Outlander have left um, from, you know, costume designers to to the showrunner, to, to writers, yeah. to um, production designers. So the actually, really, the only continuity of the show is, to be honest, is myself and Katrina in a way, especially, you know, on the ground every day. Um, and I think, yeah, it, it, is, it is very uh, uh, wise of, of the, you know, the network and, and the producers to sort of bring us on board. I think um, it's great. You know, we, we are now the guardians of, of these characters and of the show. And uh, it's, uh, it's a great honor to be able to, to have that influence. And mm -hmm. yeah, as you said, it's, um, it, is, it was a really clever idea. And it's been, I think, really beneficial to the show as well. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about the season finale, that was a very fitting end to a very strong season. After Claire is abducted, mm. tortured and raped, it's profoundly satisfying when a vengeful Jamie retaliates against the Browns and rescues her. And we have the whole part of the episode where she's dissociating and she's in the 60s. I know Katrina had a lot to do mm. with the way that looked and I know you did as well. How did you feel about mm. that episode in particular? Because you should both be very proud of the way it turned out. Yes, I think, um, you know, we were, we were very nervous about this last episode. Um, you know, it really deals with some very strong, strong issues, strong emotions and um, some pretty harrowing material. But, um, you know, I think that that's why it probably worked so well is that we really did collaborate so much with with the writers, with the director, Jamie, who, you know, we have to really thank. He, he, he approached this with great sensitivity, great detail. 
um, for weeks before, you know, we were having meetings, myself and Katrina, you know, in our trailers between, between takes or, you know, shooting other stuff, talking about the tone of the piece, um, about what you would and wouldn't see of, of any of the, the assault or the violence. Um, and then, yeah, daily, you know, even between scenes shooting it, you know, it was very, um, it was a, a really strong dialogue between all of us and Tony as well, who I have to say was fantastic. The writer, you know, she was on set with us and, um, looking at Jamie's part, you know, I think initially the way it was scripted and the way it was presented, it, you know, you would see Jamie in the seventies, you know, in this sort of seventies world. Um, and I was uncertain that I wanted to see him, you know, fully realized by Claire, you know, this is obviously part of her, her mind that is, you know, she knows it's a, a fantasy or she knows it's a, an escape. Um, so it is fractured and it is um, disjointed. Um, so I didn't didn't want Jamie to be, you know, fully realized because she knows he can't be there. She knows this isn't a real world in the back of her subconscious somewhere. So what we tried to do was give a nod to who Jamie was in in her most, um, I, I guess, the moments that she really um, treasures with Jamie, you know, season one the the the, the tartan being around her shoulders you know the comfort he brings so he's more of a i guess in a way um the feeling that he, he gives her rather than you know this fully realized um uh person yeah. in, in, in the same sense as well if that makes sense you know and i think the costume right. definitely yeah. we, we, we've talked about you know it looks it looks like jamie's wearing the clothes from the past but they're also modern um so it, it yeah. is a really so strange strange place he's he's a bit of everything um yeah, an essence of Jamie, maybe. Yeah, he was like the concept of Jamie. Um, because like we have to remember when she's going through her ordeal, the only two words she says are no and Jamie. Yeah. And then so I mean it really works. And then the season ends with a shattered Claire and Jamie, who has been through the ringer. Uh, they're holding each other in bed and then we kind of leave it there. And it's a defining moment in their relationship. What really interests me is we end season five with her surviving that brutal sexual assault, just like we ended season one with Jamie having survived a very similar ordeal. Um, how will this impact and perhaps strengthen their relationship, do you think? Yeah, well, just, you know, relating to what you said there, she she does. She The whole time through the ordeal, she, the only person she wants is Jamie. She knows if he's there, he's, he's going to hopefully be able to fix this. And I think, yeah, so... He's never fully realized in her, I guess, fantasy until until he yeah. is there in person, in real. And it's almost like she conjures him. But um, yes, I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of similarities between what happens to Jamie in season one and uh, and Claire at the end of the season. And I think, you know, they have each other. Um, however, yeah, they're they're fractured, they're broken, they're um, they're a family, and they're facing this this future together. But yeah, the cracks are, are definitely there, and I. I would say you know absolutely in, in, by no way is she healed but she's um but she's on that journey to 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 towards finding some sort of you know um uh resolve in, in this whole situation but yeah they they are absolutely not you know i guess that's what makes it so interesting and so fantastic is that these characters are broken in in various ways um and they they're facing this this unknown future together but yeah they are together and they are a family yeah, exactly. And it will be like, I haven't read the books, but I'm expecting um, Jamie to reciprocate some of the comfort and, and help that she was able to provide to him. Um, and that, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, it was such, yeah, as you said, said earlier, it was a really eventful season for Jamie. Like, he almost dies from a poisonous snake bite. It was a really interesting way to put Jamie in an unusually vulnerable position. Do you enjoy exploring that side of him? Because, you know, he's got to be strong for his family, but it's nice to see Jamie kind of in peril and relying on everybody else to kind of help him. Yeah, I th that, that episode really kind of comes out of the, the out of nowhere, really. And to be honest, you know, I'd been so, um, so concentrated, so consumed by, you know, the storyline with Marta and losing Marta. Yeah. And that, 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 that whole storyline had been so immersive for me. Um, the snake bite really kind of came out of nowhere and, uh, it is almost like its own little chapter on its own, and it it is it's fantastic because it's not only you know Jamie having to confront his mortality, but 
but also this relationship with Roger that that is you know finally being formed this bond between them and um, I, again yeah it, it was a really a really interesting episode to see Jamie having to rely on everyone else having to rely on Roger the man who he thinks is the most incapable man in this time um, and Roger does it he does it you know he, he has his Roger has his own um, abilities that, that I think Jamie's really beginning to realize that you know he he may not be a man of the time but he does have his own attributes that are you know um, pretty special and yeah it's it's great and it's, I mean to, to see Jamie at the end you know he, he he chose to come back he chose to come back for Clara because he loves her but um, it's this, probably the second time I think Jamie's you know come this close to death I think he has probably taken his last breath you know at Culloden was probably the other one yeah. and um, it's interesting that when he does he has that monologue about going through a tunnel and going towards whatever it is that it's Claire that brings him back it's like mm -hmm. a conscious decision for him to to, to remain in, on this this planet for her yeah there's so much connection with what ha happens at the end uh, of the season and um as you say the uh, James' relationship with Bree really developed. The relationship with Roger was great to watch, but I think it was that murder stuff that really got us because um, well, many of us weren't expecting that to happen for him to return uh, as part of that regulator storyline. And it made it elevated it to have uh, Duncan McQuarrie in that. And then to have him um, die uh, allowed you as Jamie to really go there as a very vulnerable. Um, and kind of devastated um, guy. And I'm just wondering, is that still very challenging to do on the show after all these years? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, absolutely having Murta as the, the leader of the, the regulators really puts Jamie um, in, a, in a dichotomy and really puts him in a position where he he's torn between both sides. And I think if it wasn't, if you didn't have that character there, I think for the viewer and possibly for Jamie, it would be, Maybe easier to for him to deal with the situation, but yeah, it really throws up this a lot of a lot of um, problems for Jamie. And I think you know early on, I think it's uh, the first episode where Jamie tells Marta to leave him. You know, I think that that really is um, sort of foretelling where where we're going to go with it. And I just loved all those scenes working with Duncan. He's such a generous. Um, thoughtful and, and and great character, and he's always been here. You know that character as well. He's always been this constant, silent companion for Jamie. He's been his father figure. He's been his guide. He's been his confidant. So for Jamie to lose that, it really is also the last, um, the last, I guess, um, tangible thing he has to Scotland, to the Highlanders, into this old way of yeah. life. Um, and now he, you know, he's lost that. So he really is now in America and. This sort of new world so it's hard for jamie to lose that and uh yeah as, you, as, you, as your question was you know is it hard to still get to those places no not really not when you have great actors not when you have people like duncan you know who, who just you know amidst all the madness of filming you know he he just brings his a game and um even even the episode after you know after episode seven when we're at the funeral you know to see jocasta you know mourning him and um it's it's really sad there's actually murta's um cairn his grave uh, we have at Fraser's Ridge on set, and uh, I know there's something about it. It's it's beautifully positioned. It's just an amazing tree, uh, and it was it's you know it's a great sort of testament to to Duncan and to his character. You know, he'll always he'll always be there for us. He'll always be there. He'll always be in our hearts. Um, speaking of that vulnerability, uh, we've I think we've touched on this before, but Jamie's strength is his emotional intelligence and how. If that doesn't fit into the time period that, within which he lives. Vulnerability and sensitivity are traits that we don't unfortunately see often enough on TV, especially for leading men. In this day and age, how important is it for you to define and exhibit Jamie's masculinity or his version of masculinity in this particular way that's different and, and better perhaps and something we should be aspiring to? Yeah, I think, you know, he is, um, on one hand, he's, you know, the all action, um heroic character but i think the appeal for me and i think possibly for the fans is that, that he's always had this other side to him this side that he he is emotional he's um he's able to to dig into those parts of himself and i think that's what makes him such a, an interesting character and and the, and the fact that he grows he's he's willing to grow um to change and i think learn from from his experiences and also from from claire his partner and um 
you know, it's always been a strong part of what Katrina and I have tried to do with the characters is that to try and find the growth of them, not only as individuals, but together. And what, what is their relationship now? What is their relationship now that, you know, he's, he's 50 years old and their grandparents and, you know, how do they, how do they love? How do they um, coexist with each other? Uh, and it's really nice to find those moments now. We, we're, we're finding, you know, when they, when we get to see Jamie and Claire on their own and and just kind of existing together. And it's something that actually he's always wanted. You know, Jamie's always wanted this this life to be yeah. um, surrounded by his family and his loved ones in in a home. And um, yeah, so I think uh, yeah, he's a he's a great character. And um, it's also nice to see him become the man he is now. You know, using all the attributes he's had before. You know, the great leader, the great warrior the general um but also you know he's, he's almost the clan leader now in, in a sense yeah he's come a long way um and that's what we love about him and and we've got so much more to look forward to season six i have no idea what's going to happen yet i don't really want to know i'll just wait yeah. through the that Miranda. um katrina told me a couple of weeks ago that you both clicked instantly and what she loves most about you oh is how you oh, and and I love, I think that's, I think it's a really lovely thing to say. So I thought I'd ask from your point of view. I missed that, actually. I missed that. What is she oh, saying about me? He said, she loves how you put your heart and soul into this role. Oh. And how you so so Yeah. So I would like to know what you think her best quality is as an actor and your co-star. Oh, well, um, I think Katrina's strength, um, you know, she, She's always led from the front. She's um, intellectual. She's extremely intelligent, um, but very giving. And she's always a very caring as well. So I think um, I'm just so lucky. You know, as she said, you know, we did click, I guess, from the start. And to to be able to trust each other and have each other's back has been you know, the most important part of this. And um, you know, there's always a weird time when we go away on shooting Outlander where we, we leave and we're always in contact. She'll call me and I'll, you know, I'll text her and we'll meet up and whatever. But yeah. that, that first day back at work, it's, it's almost like we're slightly um, tiptoeing or slightly shy of each other. And then, you know, we fall back into, into our routine and we're idiots. You know, we, we laugh a lot. We talk rubbish and we're very childish, but, but, um, but it's great to have her as a, you know, she, she drives, she, she, she pushes hard um, and she's very thorough as well. She does a lot of work and I, I you know, I just couldn't thank, be more thankful for such a great sort of co-star. Yeah. You know, like obviously uh, you're at a point in your career where eventually Outlander will wind down and you'll have other projects and you'll move on to hopefully bigger and better things. But when I speak to um, a lot of <laughs> things, but when I speak to actors in particular, a lot of them tell me, particularly ones that are around 40, 50, uh, 30 even, they say, like, you're lucky enough to get that one role, that one role where you get to do everything that defines you, it defines your, your career and your personality. And you've had that with Outlander. You've been very fortunate. Does that occur to you how this role will kind of stay with you for the rest of your life? Yeah, that's nice of you to, to kind of, see that i think um i think absolutely you know if you look at other actors and their careers and you realize that there's always a defining role and um i mean this is absolutely going to be mine of course i think i think it's always going to be with me and as we get you know further on in in, in the sort of the lifetime of this show you know we're going into to season six now and um i think yeah, I can see where the end might possibly be. And um, it's hard to think about that and hard to think about what will happen when the show is over. I think we'll all miss it greatly. Um, we, were, we already are, you know, on Droughtlander and on everything that's going on in the world. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, probably therapy or something, but there's, there's definitely <laughs> some sort of ceremony that I'm going to have to do to kind of come to terms with, with it being over. But I think what we've got, we've created a bond between all of us as actors, as as writers, as as a whole team. You know, we know we're on something special, and the fans, you know, um, they've been incredible the whole the whole way on this journey, and they've really made it. You know, if it wasn't for them, obviously, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do when it's all over. I have faith that you'll be all right, but um, 
but it reminds me when I see you on social media, I see how it, how how much you and the cast and crew mean to these fans. And you've done so much charity work, and your My Peak Challenge is so popular, and, and it must be so satisfying to see people posting their results online. And, and you seem to comment on them as much as you can. I'm sure you have lots of things going on in your life, but you seem to make the time for them. That's really special. Like you might, that might be very satisfying to you. It is, yeah. I, from from day one, you know, of of being on the show, of being cast, I think, you know, we love having interaction with fans, and um, I, I would say that Katrina and I still do as much as we can. And actually, right now, it's it's a great time to be able to talk to people uh, online. I mean, you know, it has its own challenges, and I think you know people are aware of those. But um, you know, you can give a, give as much of yourself as as we as we can. You know, it, I, I try to engage with as many people as possible and support as many projects or charities as I can but um, obviously we don't want to we don't want to overwhelm people with with all these these um, different you know projects but it's it's great it's a great part of the show and I think the fans have got behind everything you know they, they get behind whatever we're supporting they, they, they jump in with it and I think um, that's testament to probably to Diana's books and also to, to the show yeah, and finally, Stars picked up your new series, Men in Kilts, with Graham Tavish. That's really exciting. Tell us all about that, because now everyone's just buzzing about it online. <laughs> Good. Yes. Yeah. You know, I I was I've been working on producing things, and this was one of the first ideas I'd been um, looking for something to to produce. And I was chatting to Graham, and we uh, talked about this idea. And we, for, initially, we were going to do a, a podcast, um, and then I thought, well, why don't we just shoot it? Um, as a sort of mini mini series and and really the the sort of footage we got and the tone of the piece was so fun we cut it together uh, some some um, trailers and yeah we're, we're fortunate we found an amazing home obviously it's a great fit with stars and um, I can't wait for you to see it you know he's he's a great travel companion he's grumpy he's tired and uh, it's, it's it's TV gold. It's TV gold. You 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 want to go on a road trip with with me and Graham? It's it's a lot of fun. I can't wait. And mate, I can't wait for season six. Thank you so much for a great season five. We have thoroughly enjoyed watching you and Katrina and the rest of the cast. And um and thanks for your time today, mate. It's been much appreciated. Oh, mate, it's always good to see you. I'm sorry, sorry the uh, the internet gods were not on our side. <laughs> <laughs> we got there though, mate. We got there, and I'm very we thankful. Did. Awesome. All right, Thank everybody. Maybe make the predictions. Click subscribe. We've got lots of Canadian chats just like this one with Sam.